Hey there guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril and boy do we have an offering for you today. The Age of Men is most certainly over and we are here today painting up the new beautiful plastic goth mog from the new Battle of Osgiliath starter set. This model is so characterful and such a welcome update. Just look at this guy, he is absolutely menacing and ferocious. He has been an absolute joy to paint. We'll be giving you a comprehensive guide here of how to paint Gothmog. We've been using quite a simplistic way of painting him. We found very early on that this is an exercise in careful application over and above complex colour palettes. So particularly for areas like the skin and the armour and the wag, you'll find that actually the paint palettes we're using are quite simplistic and almost quite basic, but it's how you apply them in a way that gives you the finished result we have here. We'll be going through in detail how you paint the foot variant and then also how you paint the worryingly anatomically correct warg. But we're super excited to finally be bringing you Gothmog. I know we've teased him for a long time. But this terrifying and cunning villain is finally here, hitting the channel strong and a very welcome addition to the Planet Mithril Paints playlist. So without further so without further delay, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. Base colours. We're going to start with a mix of Rakoff Flesh, mixed with a small amount of Bugman's Glow, and apply this as a base coat all over Gothmog skin. Apply some a couple of small coats to get a nice smooth finish all over his arm bulge and his hands, as well as his face and neck. Now we can just mix some Iron Warriors and Abaddon Black and apply this as a base coat to all the metal work, the chainmail, armour plating and weapons on Gothmog. This will give some really nice dark undertones to the Orc armour which will translate really well when we get to the following layering and highlighting stages. and use a three part mix of Mephiston Red, Rhinox Hide and Galvor Back Red and apply this as a base coat to all the red cloth on Gothmog. We're looking in particular at focusing around the trousers, the knees, the cloth around his shoulder bulge and the cloth around his forearms. Now, using a mix of Zandri Dust and Rhinox Hide to give it a bit more of a natural, old, ragged look, we're going to apply this as a base coat to the fur running down Gothmog's back. At this stage, it's also a lot easier if you haven't glued the shield in place like we did here, but it won't be the end of the world if you have. Using a three-part mix of Storm Vermin Fur, Rhinox Hide and Abaddon Black's Toned Down, we're now going to paint in the rest of the cloth. This is particular around his midsection and the sleeves around the upper arms. Finally, we'll base coat the bulk of the wag's fur now with a mix of steel lesion drab and dryer bark. This includes the bulk of the wag's lower fur and face, as well as all around the legs and tail. For the mohawk on top, we increase the amount of dryer bark to an approximate 50-50 split, just to give some nice differentiation between the two areas of fur. Orc flesh. We're going to be keeping the painting of Gothmog skin uh, fairly simplistic as it's quite easy to overdo paler skin such as this. To start off with however, we're going to apply a light toning wash to the flesh now with Reichland Flesh Shade. This will just accentuate the subtle hues of Bugmans we use for the base coat. Now we're going to start adding Kislev Flesh to the previous Rakoff Flesh and Bugmans Glow base mix and apply this as our initial blocking layer. This will be an approximate 1 to 3 ratio split as we're looking at building up the layers nice and gradually so as not to overdo and overwork the skin too early on. The kiss left flesh will complement well with the flesh tones we've used for the base coat, but it's also light enough at this stage that it will reinforce that washed out pale look we want for this orc.
once we're happy with how our blocking stage looks we're going to apply a second toning wash now thin down even more than the previous one was with more right can flesh shade we're going to increase the amount of kislev flesh in the previous layer mix and continue to layer up all the flesh leaving the right can flesh shade washes showing in the recesses we want to keep our paint relatively thin and nice controlled strokes here as we really want to build up that gradual progression between the darker and more lighter pale areas of dwarf mog skin when you're happy with your layering stages you're going to start adding pallid witch flesh in gradual increments and start highlighting up the flesh focusing on more of the pronounced features separating out more of the fingers and creating more definition over some of his more gnarly, bulbous features. You can continue adding pallid witch flesh in as many increments and as many highlight stages as you wish until we reach the final highlight stage. What we will say however is at the final highlight stage your mix should contain no more than 50% pallid witch flesh. Any more of this and we risk overblowing the subtle flesh tones and washing out his skin too much and losing that really subtle orcish flesh that we want to keep running through the layer and highlighting stages thus far. When you're happy with how this looks, we can apply a final glaze to the flesh now with more Riken flesh shade. This will just tie all the layers and highlights together and just further reinforce that subtle underlying flesh tone. We can very carefully now pick out the recess of Gothmog's eye with Abaddon Black and finish off the pupil with Pallid Witch flesh. To finish off the face, we're also going to carefully pick out the individual teeth with Ushabti Bone. Orc Hair We'll be using a simple progression of Skaven Blight Thinned through Administratum Grey, toned down with Null Oil for Gothmog's hair. To start off with, we're going to base coat the hair on the back of his head with pure Skaven Blight Thinned. Once it's dry, we'll apply a quick, targeted shade now with Null Oil, thin down with a little bit of Lamy and Medium. Now we're going to start carefully separating out the individual strands of hair with a 50-50 mix of Skaven Black Dinge and Administratum Grey. Leading up to an edge highlight of pure Administratum Grey. Now Gothmog's hair isn't super extensive, so we don't need to go into too much detail and go through too many shades and steps to get it looking really nice alongside the skin. Orcish Armour Again, for the Orc Armour we found we can get a really nice authentic looking effect by keeping the paint scheme really really simple. So for the Orc Armour we're going to focus more on recess shading and toning down to do the bulk of the work for us and then jump into pure highlight stages later on with more stark contrasts to really give it that Orcish sharpness. To start off with, we're going to apply a toning wash to all the armour and metalwork with a mix of Agrax Earth Shade and Athonian Camo Shade in an approximate 2 to 1 split. Once it's still dry, we're going to apply a second wash now to all the armour plating and metalwork with Null Oil. This isn't going to be thinned down quite as much as the previous was as we want to really tone it back and make it look really dark and almost black once it's dry, which will make the following highlight stages really, really pop. Now for probably what is the most time consuming part of painting Gothmog. We are going to be edge highlighting every single plate of armour, every single spine and sharp detail of metalwork on this model with a 2 to 1 mix of Iron Warriors and Pallid Witch Flesh. Now the Pallid Witch Flesh will serve to wash out and desaturate the hue of the Iron Warriors in a more muted natural fashion. We want to keep as good a point to our brush as we can here and make sure these highlights at this stage are tight and thin because we really want to accentuate the orcish sharpness of those edges on his armor plating. And as you can see here, by jumping from a very dark base tone and wash tone to a very quite vibrant edge highlight at this stage really gives it the character and depth that we need to try and bring Gothmog to life on the tabletop. When you're happy with how your highlight stage is looking, we can apply an extreme dot highlight to the absolute outer edges and corners of all the metalwork by flipping the ratio of Pallid Witch Flesh to Iron Warriors, this time in favour of Pallid Witch Flesh over the Iron Warriors. 
We don't want to put any more than approximately two thirds Palette Witch Flesh into the Iron Warriors mix at this stage, as this will just overblow it and desaturate it too much. The result should give you a ferocious, jagged, dangerous looking set of metalwork for Gothmog to wield and use on the tabletop. Red cloth. Now by contrast to the skin and the armor, we're using quite a complicated progression through highlights and layers for the red cloth. The red cloth from Moran is typically a lot more bright and vibrant than any other area on the model, so it gives a really nice spot colour and a really nice uh, focal point to draw your eye to. To start off with, however, we're going to apply a manual shade to all the red cloth recesses with a mix of Galvor Black Red and Abaddon Black. This will give us some nice, rich, subtle, deep tones, which will really complement the vibrant hues we're working with later. We're going to start blocking out our layers now by adding Evil Sun Scarlet to the previous red base coat mix. We want to add this in gradual increments as Evil Sun Scarlet is a super bright and super heavily pigmented colour, so we don't want to overblow and mess up the transition between the darker and lighter areas of cloth super early on by adding this in two greater quantities. Looking at an approximate one to three split of Evil Suns to the previous base coating mix at this stage. While working your way up for your layer stages, you can add this in smaller increments and as many layers as you want to get a smoother transition between the shadowed and lighter areas of cloth. By the time we reach our final layering stage, however, our mix should be a one-to-one -one split of Evil Sun Scarlet and the previous Mephiston, Rhinox and Galvorback base coat mix. You thought Evil Sun Scarlet was bright, now we're going to be working with Troll Slayer Orange and adding this in smaller increments than we did with the Evil Suns, again to avoid overblowing the hue and tone of the model too much at this stage. This is going to be for our first initial highlight and we're looking at just further accentuating the lighter and more pronounced areas of cloth where the musculature is pressing against the cloth and where the most prominent folds are in the material. Again, as we did with the Evil Sun Scarlet, continuing to add this in small increments, progressing up to our penultimate highlight stage. If you've done this smoothly and kept a nice gradual transition between the manual shade and the lighter tones we're working with now, you should have a really smooth blended transition through to these lighter highlight stages. If you're happy with how your highlights are looking, the final highlight stage involves us adding an approximate third of Dawn Yellow into the previous mix and applying this as a fine edge highlight just to the most pronounced folds in the material where the light is catching more prominently and where the most defined musculature is pressing out against the cloth itself. Finally, we're going to tie all these layers and highlights together with a thin glaze of Caraberg Crimson all over the red cloth. Absolutely striking, Gothmog. Back fur. To start off with, we applied a shade to the back fur with Agrax Earthshade. We then carefully took the time to layer up and separate out all the individual strands of fur by adding Screaming Skull to the previous Sandry Dust and Rhinox Hide mix in an approximate 1 to 3 split. Working this all the way up to a 1 to 1 mix for the final layer stage before moving on to the highlight. And 
me then apply it a very quick highlight by adding between a third to 50% of palette pitch flesh to the overall layering mix. And now just focusing on the very edges and tips of all the strands of fur. If you're happy with how your fur is looking, we you apply the very light glaze of Agrax Earth Shade just to tie all these layers together. Black cloth. And sticking with the very traditional way of us doing our black cloth for goth mod with a slight variation when it comes to the highlight stage. We started layering up the cloth initially by increasing the amount of storm vermin fur in the previous base coat mix. Make sure we did the base coat, showing in the deepest recesses. We then started working up the black cloth by adding in administratum grey in small increments, and as we did with the red cloth, trying to create a nice smooth blend between the darker areas and the lighter areas of material. Because the base coat mix was so deep and dark, we don't need to necessarily worry about applying a shade as it's not really going to do us many favours and just serve to overcomplicate this part of the model. For the final highlight stages, we're looking at adding in between 25 and 35% of deepkin flesh to the black mixture and applying this as an edge highlight to the most prominent areas of black cloth on Gothmog. Letters. We need a very simple progression of dry bark through Bane Blade Brown just to finish off all the extra details on Gothmog. These are mainly leathers and straps at this stage. So we're going to very carefully and painstakingly paint in all the straps and leathers, including the mace handle, with dry bark. We then applied a very quick targeted highlight with a two to one mix of dry bark to Bane Blade Brown to all these leathers and all the straps with nice thin solid lines on the upper and lower areas of the belts and straps just to make them stand out against the cloth. We then created a very quick wood grain effect by dragging a very thin pointed brush in random streaks down the length of the mace handle. Wog. The goth mock is now done, but we're in no way done with the whole model yet. These are the paints we'll be using to paint up the bulk of the wog's fur. So to start off with, we're going to apply a very thorough wash to both the mohawk and the main body of the wog with Agrax Earthshade. Making sure we get in all the nooks and crannies, all around the undercarriage, behind the backs of the legs, and in and around all the fur grooves. Now you're going to call me mad at this point, but hear me out, this does really work. Our first layering stage is going to consist of a one-to-one -one ratio mix of towelite ochre to the previous steel lesion and dry bar mix. Now we took the time to go around and manually layer in every single strand of the swag's fur. We found that by taking the time to apply this as the first layer stage, it meant that the following dry brushing stages which we'll be going on to after this looked a lot more natural and had a lot more depth and transition between the dark areas of fur and the lighter areas of fur. This is by no means mandatory, you can apply this as a dry brush if you so wish, but we found this was the best way of getting naturalistic fur for this wog. At this stage as well, we also blocked out the wog's paws and the details of the wog's face. For the mohawk, we added Gawthor Brown to the slightly darker mix we used to base coat this and applied the same mentality. However, this isn't quite as in-depth and expansive as the rest of the wag is. Once you're done here, the wag is easy to finish off with, trust us. Now we're on to the fun bit and the easy bit by comparison. We applied a thorough dry brush to all the wag fur, mohawk and main body by adding Screaming Skull to the previous layer mix. Now we're not creating a differentiation between the Mohawk and the main body of fur at this point, 
because at this stage we want to tie the two together and blend them up at the same time. And again, applying the same mix and further blocking out and detailing in the wag's facial details and the wag's paws as well. For the next layer stage, we simply increased the amount of Screaming Skull in the mix. This took it to an approximate one-to-one -one split of Screaming Skull and the previous layering mix. And each dry brush stage, we got lighter and lighter and applied less paint to get a nice natural transition. And again, using the same mix to further define the snarling, ferocious look of the wag's head. We then applied a penultimate highlight dry brush by adding in an approximate 20-25% pallid witch flesh to the previous mix. We haven't shown you this dry brush here because you don't need five minutes of us dry brushing a wag. We've just simply shown you how we went around and detailed the face at this stage and we'll be showing you the final highlight stage dry brush in just a moment. For the final dry brush highlight stage, we increased the amount of pallid witch flesh further in the overall mix and applied this as a feather like dry brush. And by manually highlighting the pores and the facial details, we've got a really nice transition from the really ferocious gnarly look to his fur billowing in the wind on the fields of Pelennor. We're going to push the definition of the mohawk and the body of fur now we're happy with how this looks and apply a light glaze to the mohawk with Agrax Earthshade. And then just to create a little bit more of a contrast between the two at this stage and bounce off those base cut layers we used initially, we applied a glaze of Seraphim Sepia to the main body of the wag. Wag details. These are the paints we'll be using to fill in the rest of the facial details. We painted in the Wag's eyes in the same way we painted Goth Bugs, with a thin line of Abaddon black to start off with, and filling in with Pallid Witch flesh to finish off the eyes. The tongue in the mouth was then carefully picked out with a base coat of Bugman's Glow. This was then given a quick edge highlight using KD and Flesh Tone. Now we're going to very carefully pick out all the wag's teeth and claws using Rakar Flesh. And applying a very fine edge and dot highlight respectively with Pallid Witch Flesh. We'll be using some nice, rich, leathery browns for the remaining details on the wag. Starting off with a 1-3 to three mix of Rhinox Hide and Doodball Brown to paint in the reins, all the straps, Gothmog stirrups and the saddle. These were then given a very careful, targeted wash with Agrax Earthshade. And finally, an edge highlight was applied to both sides of all the straps and all the reins 
by adding in Deathclaw Brown to the previous Doom Ball and Rhinox Hive mix. We use a very simple progression of Lead Belcher through Iron Breaker just to pick out the final metal details across the wad. We carefully picked out any belts and buckles and any bolts on the straps and stirrups with Lead Belcher, followed by a dot highlight just to make them pop a little bit with Iron Breaker. You can base your goth bug however you wish. If you wish to know how we base ours here, you can find the video in our 5 minute bases playlist on the YouTube channel. And there we are, our finished goth bug, ready to lead the armies of Sauron to victory outside the gates of Minas Tirith on the fields of Pelennor. Oh yes goth mog, the time of the orc most definitely has come. <laughs>